Once again, just a reminder, check your cell phones, please, if you haven't been in here, to put them on mute and silent as North Carolina makes their way in. Oh, All right, oh I, I put my phone near my hotel key. Oh, <laughs> Bummer. Bad idea. I, I have that poor lady sees me every day. All right, I think we're ready to begin. Uh, next up is North Carolina Tar Heels. They are now 20 and 12. They are in the number eight seed in the Albany One Regional. They advance to the second round with a 59 to 56 win over Michigan State. Uh, joined this afternoon by head coach Courtney Banghart and student athletes Deja Kelly and Alyssa Usby. Coach, if you would please make an opening statement. Yeah, sure, we're thrilled to be here. I mean, it's hard to win in March and these guys did it. Um, uh, beat a very good Michigan State team, um, had to play um, excellent defensively, and we did that. Uh, took advantage of some opportunities on offense as well, um, and cut, had to play through some, some things, right? We didn't shoot the ball well, we didn't shoot the ball well from the free throw line, um, but we just kept on keeping on. And uh, super thrilled for this opportunity. Um, we know we've got a great opponent um, in their gym, in a place that really celebrates women's basketball. So, uh, you know, this is a two storied program, so we know this means a lot to a lot of people, so certainly glad to be a part of it. And open up for questions just for the student athletes at this time. If you raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Introduce yourself, if you would, and your affiliate, David. David Cloninger, Post and Curry, and Deja. Uh, Alyssa, what do you all remember from the game in Chapel Hill? What are a few of the, the key words that stand out about that matchup? Alyssa, you want to take that first? Yeah, I think one of the first ones is competitive. I think South Carolina is a very good team, and they compete really hard. And that's something that we like to do, too. I think that's why we're a great matchup for them. Deja? Yeah, I think um, our defense kind of ignited our energy in that game. Um, I think we ended up, I think we all rebounded them, yeah, that game. Um, so just from jump, I think the way we came out, um, we came out just, we matched their, their intensity, we matched um, you know their aggressiveness. So I think that's what kind of carried us through the game and um, obviously put a, put a big fire under us too. The second row. Hi, Emma Moon with the Daily Tar Heel. For Alyssa and Deja both, when I was talking to Marie yesterday, she described tomorrow's matchup as a revenge game. And how would you assess that energy heading into tomorrow and how much is revenge a part of it? Deja, you want to take that first? Yeah. I think, you know, it's it's great that Maria said that because, you know, obviously for us it is because we played them in um, the Sweet 16 two years ago. So this will be our second time playing them in, in March. Um, so in that way it is. But, you know, I think we're – the biggest way for us to look at it is just, you know, the next game. You know, I don't, I don't want to put a title to it. I don't want to, um, you know, make it seem bigger than it is, quote unquote. I think, you know, we just have to match, you know, the energy. We have to match the, the level um, that it's at. And we know it's March, so we know that we have to bring our best. And that's really what we're focused on. Alyssa? Yeah, I would um, add on to what Deja was saying. Um, I don't think it needs to be any more than just the next game in the March Madness tournament. Um, uh, they're obviously, again, a great team. If we were playing any other team in the round of 32, we would have just as much confidence and competitive energy um, poured into that matchup. Let's go to the right. Yeah, Mitch Miller from North Carolina Public Radio. Um, for Alyssa and Deja, um, I, assuming you've seen South Carolina on, on film a little bit since yesterday and got to see them against Presbyterian, are they different at all from when you saw them in March? And if so, how? Alyssa, you want to go first? I think they're pretty similar. I think what makes South Carolina a great team is that they're really good at playing together and making good reads. Then so that's where we just got to buckle down on our fundamentals and how we play basketball. And that's typically we describe that as playing connected, playing with each other, and starting our game strong on the defensive end because we know that carries over to our offensive. So as long as we take care of those principles, I think we have a, um, a really great game plan for them. Deja? Yeah, I would agree. I think they're they're pretty similar. You know, we, we know what they what their tendencies are. I think they're getting a little more from their bench. Um, but other than that, I think you know we have our heads wrapped around kind of then and now. Let's go to the second row. Uh, Caroline Wills with the DTH. You guys already mentioned this before, but Alyssa and Deja, this is the second time in three seasons you're meeting South Carolina with a season on the line. What does that kind of mean to you, and how does it impact your mentality? Deja. Um, I think, you know, just kind of what I was saying earlier, you know, you're, you're matching it like it, it's our next game in, in March Madness. Um, you know, I, obviously it's it's fun to play a top team like that. They're a really good team, and it's, it's obviously a great matchup, but, um, you know, so are we. So I think just being able to match it with that intensity and, um, you know, just being excited for the opportunity. I think that's that's as, what us seniors have to do is bring that energy to the locker room and um, just make sure that's carried through through the rest of our teammates. and 
knowing that this is a great opportunity for us and that we, you know, are, are fighting to move on. So, Melissa? I think that's well said. It's like, God. <laughs> <laughs> Not much else to say. Um, for Alyssa, Don Staley described you as a nightmare matchup for her team. Um, <laughs> what's your reaction to that, and why do you think you match up so well against South Carolina? Um, I think I match up well um, in this game because I love to compete, and uh, they also like to do that as well. And any opportunity that I can get an advantage, whether it's a competitive advantage or something X's and O's wise, I'm going to take it, and I'm not going to shy away from it. Um, but yeah, I respect her for saying that. Pete? A matchup nightmare for a lot of people. <laughs> um, you know, kind of a similar, similar question here. You know, these, the, uh, South Carolina has blown a lot of people out over the last three years, and it hasn't been you guys. You guys have played them tough the two times you played them in the last three seasons. What is it about the challenge of facing a team like that that allows you guys to kind of rise to the challenge of that? Alyssa? I think one thing that's special about our group is that we're going to meet the moment. And so whatever that moment calls for, we have so many girls that are willing to step up and fill in those roles. And so I think what makes this a, an awesome matchup is that neither team is going to back down and you're going to get a really good fight. And just the result of that on the scoreboard is going to be a, a close game. Deja, you want to Yeah, I think, you know, I think that was well said, too. I think it's just, you know, we're playing – we're very competitive. I think we're playing with no fear. We know that it's a great opportunity, a great matchup. Um, so I think we treat it as such. And we, again, we match the level of intensity. We match the level of aggressiveness. Um, so I think you've seen that pretty consistent with this matchup over the couple of, last, past couple of years. Any other questions for the student athletes? Seeing none, you all can go back to the locker room. Thank you. Thanks, cool. guys. Go Heels. Go Heels. We'll take questions now for Coach Banghart. Raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Let's start over here with David. I'm David Gloniker, Post and Courier. Courtney, what do you remember about the game in Chapel Hill? A yeah. lot of fouls. I believe South Carolina's whole front line was in foul trouble in the first half. Just Was that a product of your defense? Mm -hmm. Just uh, how the game was officiated? What do you remember about that and how do you hope to replicate it? Just two really uh, prideful and competitive teams. Um, and so, you know, p part of our, we know that to handle their interior game is not easy, right? And so we do that a bit by committee. We've got some good length at that, in those spots. Um, I remember uh, Malaysia wasn't playing as much then, right? She's playing better now or playing more now. So she's, she's added a nice element to their team. Um, we had, you know, our we had three different point guards in that game play that are not dressed this this game, you know, this this uh, for tomorrow. So we've got a little bit of, of a smaller rotation. They've got a little bigger rotation. So there's probably some some storyline in there as well. Um, but you know, I, I, their place. We knew that you just if you don't bring your best against the best, they're going to blow you out, right? That's just the nature of of what happens in competitive athletics, right? And so um, as these guys alluded to, you have to meet things with your best, right? Um, and we have every expectation that they'll continue to do that. Pete. Courtney, do you have some kind of super secret special South Carolina <laughs> plan that's allowed you guys to do what a lot of teams, yeah. a lot of teams have not been able to do the last few years? I don't think so. You know, it's I'm so focused on each team, and I, I find it intriguing the uniqueness of every team. Um, and so in, prep in preparing for South Carolina, it's totally different than preparing for Michigan State. Um, and so I kind of get really in the weeds on, on those things. Um, and, you know, we've fortunately, part of South Carolina's brilliance is how, as, as these guys have said, how competitive they are across the roster, right? So if you have some weak links competitively, you're, you're going to get blown out. It's just a thing, right? So I think part of it is we've recruited really competitive kids that meet that moment, right? Um, and you know we were able to get out and transition a bit. We were able to run because they're if they're going to be big, they're not going to be you know it's pretty hard to be big and fast, right? Um, so that will be a key part of the game as well. We're going to have to you know at their place, or I guess it was in Greensboro two years ago. Um, you know that was a possession game. We just ran. You know we just took it right to them. So um, you know I think their the level of competitiveness is elite. And I think we talk a lot about South Carolina size and roster and their depth. I don't think people talk enough about how competitive they are. Um, and right through their whole roster. Um, and so fortunately, I think we've got the same type of team. 
It's going to third round. Yeah, Courtney. Um, you know, Tiani had a great game. Sure yesterday. did. Didn't get to play against South Carolina in November, yeah. and not in the Sweet 16 and 22 either. Um, with South Carolina size, like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. how important will that post depth and her be for you all? Absolutely, and she can run. Um, you know, India only played about two minutes in that game as well, and India's started for us yesterday. Um, so we've had to sort of change and evolve. And, you know, um, in, uh, Tiani wasn't cleared um, the last time we played them. She missed the most of the non-conference with an injury. So um, her, her season is is upward trajectory. And thankfully, the longer the season goes, the more she has an upward trajectory. Um, so yeah, we expect to need her, and we need her to play well. Um, the physicality of the moment is, is important that she grasps quickly. Um, and then same thing with India. India was still kind of learning and, and, and working through her stuff and her transfer process and she's not much more confident and settled um, so they'll have to have key parts of they'll have to have a key a key roles in the game for sure on the third row here a uh, picky backing off of that mm -hmm. but how else have you seen this team change since playing <laughs> South Carolina at the beginning of the season well, we've changed multiple times right and so that's part of it I mean in the position that's the hardest one to sort of lose is your point guard right because you, you play to the personality of who has the ball in their hands a lot right and this is Deja's the fourth person we've played there. Um, and so we've, our team has changed dramatically four times and had um, strengths and weaknesses th through that. Um, and really proud of them yesterday that they played to their strengths, our own individual strengths. We didn't shoot it well. We didn't take care of some of the special situations well. Um, but yeah, we're different. You know, I thought we were, you know, Kayla was running the point at that time. So we had a lot of speed. You know, she gets the ball out quickly. Um, and so Alyssa was playing a lot at the four. This is playing a lot of the three now when we're big. So um, we're just, we're a little bit different, or maybe we're a lot of bit different. Um, but it's the things that we were talking about that really matter when you play South Carolina. You need competitiveness right on down the roster. You need toughness. Um, and you need to play to your strengths up and down the roster. Those things are, are standards for us. So um, I, I, I'm comfortable with that, with that being our reality. Other questions for Coach? We'll go back over to the right and Pete. Uh, you said yesterday you were going to take a deeper dive into South Carolina. Yeah, I've um, taken it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what have you seen out of uh, Pow Pow mm. and her ability, her consistency from the outside? It's something South Carolina really hasn't always had at yeah. times in during this run. She's shooting almost 65% behind off the dribble behind ball screens. It's the best in the country, right? Um, she If she shot more, she'd score more. Right, she's a highly efficient shooter. I don't know what her actual percentages are because we kind of get in the weeds on where those are coming from. Um, and when you're talking ball screen, shooting behind ball screens, that kid is lights out, right? Um, and has been all year long against high level competition. Um, she picks her spots, so she 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 fits into them because she also they want to play an interior offense, and she's willing to do that, right? Um, and yet, if you spend too much time worrying about the inside, then she's also going to catch and shoot. So she's just a key part of their. Uh, it was a key ad for them and makes them makes them super hard to guard. And, and her playing well in that second half is kind of what, especially in that fourth quarter there at our place, um, kind of broke our back a bit. Um, really good player, super experienced. And you sometimes she just you, you, she does it so effortlessly, you wonder if she's playing hard. And then when you watch the film back, she's playing hard. She just looks effortless. Let's go back over the right, or left, rather. Coach, you mentioned yesterday that it's common in this part of the season to really be battling with fatigue, especially for you guys having a limited bench rotation. <laughs> How are you hoping the team will kind of cope with that tomorrow, and what are you kind of telling them to get them through that? You know, I told them I'd call a timeout with um, about four minutes into the second, uh, third quarter, so that they got that long timeout followed by the other long timeout. Um, told them to, you know, pull on their shirt and tell me when they have to come out. I was not expecting Maria and Alyssa to do it at the same time. That was a bummer. Um, <laughs> But um, you know, you saw the pace of play in the first half versus the second half for us. It's hard. It's hard to ask them to play at that pace for 40 minutes. And I'd love to sit up here and tell you we can do it, but it's really hard to do. It's a physical game too, right? Um, and so their deep bench is gives them a higher margin of error for sure. Um, our not deep bench gives us a much smaller margin of error, right? Um, but you know, that's why you throw the ball out, right? You don't. 
you don't win games on stat sheets. You win games on how you play inside the lines, right? And so we'll have to understand. We know who we are. We've got a small margin of error. So our pieces that are in have to play really well, um, and they have to play hard, and we have to play through some things, fatigue, foul trouble, and things are a part of what we are is, is the hand we're dealt right now. Um, but we've won a whole lot of basketball games against really, really good teams being who we are. So we're just going to keep doing that. Go back to Pete one more time. Courtney, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, everybody has to be seated somewhere yeah. right in this tournament. Do you like facing somebody you already faced? I mean, if you guys advance, mm -hmm. you know, Notre Dame's going to be in Albany too or, yeah. you know, playing to be in Albany. You've seen them before. Do you like those kind of rematches in the postseason at uh, tournament time? I think the ACC, you sign on for that because there's so many good teams in the ACC, and so you can't – I would imagine most champions have had to play a conference team if you're in a power conference at least once in their journey. Um, I don't love it for the first two rounds because there's so many good teams out there, right? And so to have an opportunity, I know Duke played Richmond. They already played them this year, you know, and like you just, you kind of want to play teams that you don't schedule a ton or you, um, and there's enough good teams that you could do that. So I'm thrilled to be playing South Carolina because I, I have a lot of respect for their program and it's close for our t fans to get to and all of that. But from a pure basketball standpoint, I think it was a miss. I think for us to have an opportunity to play a Tennessee or a, or a, um, I don't know who else is on what seed lines or whatnot, but I mean, we played this game in November. This game has been played, right? And, you know, I don't know if we hadn't played Iowa yet, you know, that would have been neat. Yeah, we haven't played UCLA. We scrimmaged them or, or we haven't played USC, you know? Um, so I don't know if that's, if it's for a storyline or I, I don't know, but yeah, I, I find it, I don't think it's great for the game. Like, we schedule this game. I could schedule this next year, too, right? It's a little harder for me to go schedule South Carolina. I mean, uh, USC, it's hard to get to, right? Um, so, I, yeah, I, I would think most coaches are going to want to play different opponents than they schedule. And then when you get to pass the Sweet 16, it's hard to do that because it depends on who beats who. So you guys are going to play South Carolina next year? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. The SEC Challenge did it this past year. Um, we scrimmaged them each of the last two years. So, so I don't know. Not sure. That's not. That's partly my job, but not today. <laughs> not today. I'm not gonna worry about that today. Any other questions for Coach? Good. Cool. Right, Coach. Thanks, Thank guys. Have a good day. Oh, Chris. Thanks. All right.